sorry. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna try and do a little bit of kind of Icelandic grammar or at least learn the alphabet. Icelandic is not the easiest language that's kind of a given. I have been in Iceland for four years now and um, my Icelandic isn't brilliant. Ingemar does say that I know too much <laughs> and can overhear his conversations and know what he's up to. Aside from my Icelandic, this will hopefully give you a little bit of background into what it's like to speak Icelandic and what it sounds like. So over to the Viking to teach you the alphabet. Hi guys, so here is the Icelandic alphabet. A, A, B, D, Eð, I'm going to say that one again. Eð, E, Ye, Eð, Ge, Há, E, Í, Jóð, Ká, Ell, M, N. O, O, P, R, S, T, U, U, V, X, Y, 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 if you're interested in having the letters, we're selling them. So, Sonia asked me to explain a little more why is there no C and why is there no Z. Uh, I think it's just Iceland is wanting to be hip and cool and because we lived on an island when they invented C and Z, they really didn't come to Iceland until like five or six hundred years later and therefore they weren't included in the alphabet and then when we decided on an official alphabet we saw we have about 30 letters and we don't need more and s and k can just come in so sonia asked me how would you say charlotte we would use the danish version of the words which is carlotta then she asked me how would we say christmas and there is no c in christmas in icelandic because it's jól so we don't need c really do we and Z is uh, written as S in Icelandic most part, but there are people who still hang on to the Z because they were like hip and cool at the beginning of the 20th century. And so it has kind of crept in every now and then and Z also appears because English is uh, spoken a lot and, and uh, the English alphabet is on every keyboard and, and, and uh, constantly around us. So Z and Z are creeping back in. But I don't think they're going to be officially included for the next decade. But you never know. Maybe we'll see them and we'll have to remake this episode. I'm going to explain the Icelandic letters and we're going to start with Á, which is the earliest letter, the second letter in our alphabet. It's an A with an apostrophe above it, or accent. Á. Uh, this is a really important letter because uh, if you own something, you átra. So, Á is a very important letter for everyone who owns something. Uh, eth, uh, that's like a D with an apostrophe or a, a, uh, something through it. Uh, and the small one is really misunderstood as a small D. Uh, and people have a hard time pronouncing it. It's Eth. Eth. Yeah, put out your tongue when you play, say it and no one thinks you're retarded. E, with an apostrophe above it, is Yeah. And it's very important for everyone who has an identity because I is Ye in Icelandic. Ye and G. Uh, not very much used in the beginning of uh, words. Uh, I can only come up with a few, but used a lot in the middle of because of pronunciation. And then many names you know uh, uh, that are Scandinavian in origin, they change a little bit when they go into Icelandic because of the pronunciation. The next letter is E. Uh, that's an I with an apostrophe above it, or E becomes 
E when the astrophe is about on a, an accent uh, yeah, that leans to the right. Then we have O. That's an, that's an O. <laughs> uh, in Icelandic, O is O. And the O with an astrophe is an O. It goes into a circle. It's a demonic device. O is an O in Icelandic and becomes O again when you have the astrophe above it. So Icelanders are very pretentious. Instead of just saying O, they have to have an astrophe above the O. The next one is Ö. It becomes U, the latter half of U, when you put the astrophe above it. So Ö or U becomes U when you put the astrophe above it. Then we have Y, which is Epsilon in Icelandic. It becomes Epsilon E when it uh, has the astrophe above it. Uh, that is not very complicated, but what you say Y, we say Epsilon or Epsilon E. Epsilon is the letter. E is the pronunciation. It's the same as I, E, and Epsilon is E. The words change a lot like in when you buy what, what's happening around them. I don't know what, what you call that. I'm not very good at Icelandic. When the word changes based on its origin, it will either take I or Epsilon. E or Epsilon. I or I. Wow. And then you have the Epsilon E. Y with an astrophe above it. And that has the same. And these are usually changed when you have U or U. For instance, if we talk about how heavy changes, uh, in English you say heavy, heavier, heaviest. In Icelandic it's thungur, thingri, thingstur. Because it's a U, it becomes epsilon or Y. If it had been U, it would become an epsilon with an astrophe above it. Epsilon E. The next letter is thought. Thought is the TH word. So where you say Tor and you write four letters, we only have to write three. But we have one astrophe in that, so it kinda evens out. Then we have the wondrous letter of I. I is A and E together. Yeah, we took A and E, we're so badass, and we put them into one letter. And now it's I. But whereas you use E, we use I. And then we have Ö. You should say that one a few times. Ö. If you say bus, you're getting Ö. Bus. Ö. That's a O with two astrophes above it. That letter is one of the more resounding Icelandic ones. And you'll probably have a hard time pronouncing it. If you're interested in learning more, please put, your, put a like and subscribe and we might throw out a couple of more videos. Thank you. How is bus u? Bus. Bus. Spoon is u. No, that would be spoon. No, spoon. U. Spoon. That's u. Uh. That's the u with the other uh. They just don't sound the same in our ears as your ears. Yeah, because you don't. Yeah, because yeah. you pronounce the letters differently. Yeah. How am I supposed to be able to pronounce this alphabet and these words when yeah. they're totally pronounced differently? Yeah, but we have, for instance, I. Is it still recording? Yeah, it's still recording.